Hi guys. It's Sunday afternoon um, here in the greenhouse uh, for my daily watering and checkup. So I thought that I would give you your weekly greenhouse update. Show you around. I just finished watering. Um, it's a hot one out here today, even though the skies are kind of overcast and it's cold and windy outside. Um, got a bunch of stuff to tell you. I think you can probably see how empty things are now that the pickups happened. Anything that's left here, so we have these orders that are still here on this table. Let's see, we've got about six orders left that haven't been picked up. Otherwise, everything has been picked up. The only things we have left here that aren't accounted for in some way that we didn't sell are these few tomatoes right here. We've got some oddball tomatoes, some of the um, extra seeds that we got from Magways, but this little group right here, um, that's all we have left that we haven't sold. And this little group of herbs right here. That's it. Everything else that's in here still, so it still does look a little bit full and I wanna show you around at some of the stuff that we do still have left. Um, everything else here is spoken for and was spoken for before the sale. They're all gonna be used in a variety of ways. Some of the things are things that I bought myself to put in my own garden. I have a large garden at my house and a lot of those things are gonna go in here. A lot of these things are gonna to go to all the gardens around campus. My goal is when you come back in the fall, for those of you who are coming back in the fall, we'll have a really beautiful um, bunch of garden beds set up. Really, um, these are gonna be our tomatoes that are gonna go in those raised beds out back. We've also got some um, broccoli, some herbs. All of this stuff is for the school. So all of these vegetables are gonna go out and herbs are gonna go out in the school garden, in addition to this lettuce. This lettuce is gonna go out, these zinnias. So now you guys can really start to see what some of the flowers look like. This is our zinnia. And over here it's cool, when you guys were seeding zinnias back in the end of February, beginning of March, there were more than one kind of zinnia. Um, this one is called cactus flower. And see how the flower is so much different than this. This is the come and cut again and the cactus flower. So they're quite a bit different. The, and this is the whole thing about how you need all five parts of the plant to do ID because the leaves you can see are identical, but those flowers are quite different and they will come in a bunch of different colors. So those are some of the zinnias. You can see some of the other zinnia colors over here, some hot pinks. This one's a little bit, has a smaller flower, a little bit of a hot pink. The bright orange over there. Some more hot pinks and yellows over here. So we'll have a whole raised bed out back that's just filled with zinnias. All of these flowers here too, <clears throat> these lettuces, this is some romaine lettuce, some leftover marigolds, this is basil. We're gonna have an entire uh, raised bed of basil. It's really important that we start moving things out of here a um, couple of problems that start popping up this time of year. This tray of straw flowers, I grow these every year to put out by the rail garden that's over by the softball field and the barn. These really got wiped out, super dried. They'll come back. I just barely watered them. They will come back, but look at how terrible they look. Now, I watered these yesterday before I left school. And I didn't leave school yesterday until 2.30. And it's about 2.30 right now. So in just a day's time, that's how dried out they get. That's because the root systems are so, this whole flat, look at the roots. That just needs to get transplanted. This is a plant now that just doesn't have enough space. And these are all individual plants. So there's probably about 50 straw flower and up until now, they've been just fine. They're growing in that pot. They've been very happy. You can see these amaranthus here have a little bit more space. Two kinds of amaranthus in that flat. And look how beautiful and dark that flat of amaranthus. Those are gonna go in big planters out in front of the school. 
all that beautiful maroon foliage is going to look really fantastic. So one of the problems we start seeing about this time, and truthfully, it's been too cold to put stuff outside. We've got to wait at least another week. I'm looking at the weather every day, trying to figure out when we're going to put things out. Um, and I would have loved to have already been putting things out by now. Not that I would have had enough time working here on my own, but I would have loved to have had things going outside. Now there's another problem that starts showing up around now, and it's because the greenhouse environment is so hot, and I'm over here by this other table of zinnias trying to find the problem, and now I'm not seeing them. When I was over here watering, I saw a mealybug on the zinnias. Now I don't see him. I'll see if I can find him while I'm walking around. But what happens this time of year is, you know, this hot, moist environment bugs like this. Now once these guys get outside, it's going to be biological control as part of integrated pest management, which is those big bugs are going to eat the little bugs that are the problems here in the greenhouse. But that's another reason why it's really time for these things to get outside. The yellowing of those leaves at the bottom, that's also because if you look at the root systems on these things, they really need to be transplanted. So it's probably going to be another week temperature wise before we can get outside and then there's just the whole timing thing. A couple other things I want to show you is I had some customers who brought in planters and wanted me to put together planter gardens for them. This is a really neat thing for you guys to see because if you wanted to have a little business for yourself, once you understand what you're growing and how to grow, there's all kinds of beautiful things you can do. Not everybody has a big yard where they can have a big garden, but you can have some really interesting gardens and containers. So this customer brought these three containers in to me. They kind of go together. So they're gonna be on the same patio. So what I did is I designed these planters so that they have vegetables, herbs, greens, and flowers growing in them. And I found things that I could do with all three of them so that they would look like they go together, even though each one is different. This one has just a tomato growing in the center. It's going to be a regular big boy tomato. The customer only wanted one tomato. She says she's the only one in her family who eats them. But around the outside, now this is going to fill up the center part of the planter. But to keep it looking interesting, I put some oregano and a little bit of purple alyssum around the outside. This will fill in like ground cover. The purple alyssum and the oregano will both droop over the container a little bit. The tomato is going to grow nice and tall and get thick. And so this is going to look lovely where a tomato plant all by itself in a container might not be that attractive. These two are going to hang up on the side of the patio. They're going to, you can see there's one up there and one down here. So I started each of these with some zinnias. I put a few zinnias in each. You can see them up here too. And then this one is all herbs. So you've got some basil, a sage, more oregano, some thyme, and some parsley. And then to pull it together with the tomato plant, I also added a little of that purple alyssum. The oregano will help pull it all together. And then this is going to be a Thumbergia vine. That's one of those black-eyed Susan vines. This is going to flower. It's going to get really long. So the matching one are, is her kale garden. So again, I put a few zinnias, just a few zinnias in there to make it interesting. These guys need to stand up a little bit better, but they will as they straighten back up. Then I've got some spinach, several different kinds of kale. This will fill all in and the customer can harvest the kale right out of this window box and a little bit of purple alyssum here as well. So these are gonna look really pretty together. You can even see the three of them together. They just look great. It's a lot of fun to make these combinations. Here's another customer, kind of the same idea. So in this one, we've got, again, this is just a kale garden here, all different kinds of kale and spinach, and she can harvest this just like I showed you before. Just take that one piece right off there, harvest this piece of kale, and she can keep harvesting this all summer. The spinach will get, once it gets too hot, the spinach will go by, but she can keep harvesting the kale all summer. This is her herb, her herb planter. She's got basil, 
she's got sage she's got some parsley some thyme and some oregano so it looks super pretty here's her tomato here she has tomatoes and cucumbers this one tomato is going to grow up the middle and then the cucumbers are going to droop like vines over the side so they can all be in this one planter and this is a flowering ground cover called portulaca which will probably fill in this entire surface of this and hang over the side so it's going to look really nice here's her other tomato pot this tomato is a chocolate cherry and these are two big boys these will both be fine in this pot they're going to have enough space and then the surface is covered with portulaca this is what the flat of portulaca looks like there's about a million plants in here a lot of this is going to get pulled apart and put out in front by the entryway to the school portulaca likes to grow in really really hot dry conditions so it's loving being out here in the greenhouse where let's see if we can see the thermometer i don't know if you can see that it's 95 right now and here it was 100 before the fans came on last time so this portulaca is what will fill in the inside of that customer's pots over there here's some more of that alyssum it comes in white and it comes in purple and as i've been making these planters for people i've just been pulling off hunks of the alyssum from this flat this is a great way to do it because this plant is really really um hardy it's not fussy you can pull off chunks and plant it and then i have there's a there's a whole bunch of plants right in this handful and i can either plant them as a clump or divide them up a little bit more and then i don't have to spend a lot of money on six packs and stuff and this is something if you are a gardener or running a small business for yourself and you wanted to take people's planters in and put them together um, and do different designs you can really charge quite a bit of money for these kinds of things here's a couple more planters these are our nasturtiums a couple planters got dropped off these nasturtiums are going to hang beautifully look how long they are they go all the way down to the floor it's crazy these are flowers that are edible these are some of our edible flowers and the nasturtiums this one actually didn't get enough water i'm gonna have to come back with the hose after i'm done chatting with you so again you've got some of the purple alyssum and some nasturtium look at those things they're just spectacular we sold a bunch of other ferns look at this for those of you who worked on making scented geraniums if you recall the top of this shelf was covered with scented geraniums there's the last man standing still looks good still smells great so you can see other than the stuff that's spoken for for school or the other customers that have asked for specialty orders there really isn't much left we'll plow through this stuff pretty quickly hopefully we'll get out of here before the mealybugs or the aphids really show up and cause trouble that's our next challenge our old challenge of the rats has been solved um, bruce brought in a different kind of rat poison and both on monday and tuesday hang you might want to cover your ears on this one I found dead rats floating in the pond and the turtles had eaten off their heads. It was just lovely. <laughs> so that's just part of things going back to nature. All right, guys, so a little quick view of the pond today before I let you go. Oh, and before I let you go, the grand total for our greenhouse sale was 1,000 nine hundred and seventy five dollars good work guys have a great day